ladies and gentlemen. We're just waiting about 10 minutes as the Masons assemble, and then they will be coming in to do their memorial service. So just ask that you be patient and, and give them that time. Thank you. Brethren and friends, it has been the custom among the fraternity of free and accepted Masons from time immemorial, at the request of a departed brother or his family, to assemble in the character of Masons and with the solemn formalities of the craft to offer up to his memory before the world the last tribute of our affection. Our brother has reached the end of his earthly toils. The brittle thread which bound him to earth has been severed, and the liberated spirit has winged its flight to the unknown world. The silver cord is loosed, the golden bowl is broken, the pitcher is broken at the fountain, and the wheel is broken at the cistern. The dust has returned to the earth as it was, and the spirit has returned to God who gave it. Worshipful Brother Peter Imperial Kabakungan of Crocker Lodge Number 212 entered into rest April 14, 2022 at the age of 84 years, 9 months, and 14 days. Initiated and entered Apprentice Mason on April 20, 1968, 
passed to the degree of Felgraf on May 20, 1968, raised to the sublime degree of Master Mason on June 15, 1968. He served as Master of Crocker Lodge in 1980, and he was a recipient of the Golden Veterans Award 2018, 50 years of membership. The great creator having in his infinite wisdom removed our brother from the cares and troubles of this earthly life. Thus severing another link in the fraternal chain by which we are bound together. Let us who survive him be yet more strongly cemented by the ties of brotherly love. That during the brief space allotted to us here, we may wisely and usefully employ our time. And in the mutual exchange of kind and friendly acts promote the welfare and happiness of each other. While we pay this fraternal tribute to his memory, let us not forget, my brethren, that we too are mortal and that our spirits too must return to the God who spake them into, into existence. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. The Almighty fight has gone forth. Thus thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And that we are all subject to that decree, the daily observation of our lives furnishes evidence not to be forgotten. Seeing then, my brethren, that life is so uncertain, and that all material pursuits are vain, let us no longer postpone the all-important concern of preparing for eternity, but let us embrace the present moment while time and opportunity are offered to provide for that great change when all the pomp and pleasure of this fleeting world will pall upon the senses and the recollection of a virtuous and well-spent life will yield the only comfort and consolation. Thus, we shall not be unprepared to enter into the presence of the one all-wise and powerful judge to whom the secrets of all hearts are known. And on the great day of reckoning, we shall be ready to give a good account of our stewardship while here on earth. With becoming reverence, let us supplicate the divine grace on whose goodness, goodness and power know no bounds that on the arrival of the momentous hour, our faith may remove the clouds of doubt, draw aside the sable curtains of the hidden world beyond, and bid hope sustain and cheer the departing spirit. Let us pray. Most glorious God, author of all good and giver of all mercy, pour down thy blessing upon us. We beseech thee and strengthen our solemn engagement with the ties of sincere affection. And you us with fortitude and resignation in this hour of sorrow, and grant that the dispensation from the hands may be sanctified in its results upon the hearts of those who now meet to mourn. May the present instance of mortality draw our attention towards thee, the only refuge in time of need, enable us to look with the eyes of faith towards the realm whose skies are never be darkened by sorrow. And after our departed, hence, here in peace and thy favor, May we receive into the everlasting kingdom to enjoy the most reward of virtues and well-spent life. Amen.
Our brother has been raised in that blissful lodge which no time can close and which will remain open during the boundless ages of eternity. In that heavenly sanctuary, the mystic light unmingled with darkness will reign unbroken and perpetual. There, under the protection of the all-seeing eye, amid the smiles of immutable love, in that house not made with hands eternal in the heavens, there, my brethren, may Almighty God in his infinite mercy grant that we may meet again to part no more. The lax skin apron is an emblem of innocence and the badge of a mason more ancient than the golden fleece or the Roman eagle, more honorable than the star or garter, or any distinction that can be conferred by king, prince, potentate, or any other person. By it, we are reminded of that continuity of pure life and conduct, so essentially necessary to gain admission into the celestial lodge above, where the supreme grand master of the universe forever resides. This evergreen, which once marked the temporary resting place of one illustrious in Masonic history, is an emblem of our enduring faith in the immortality of the soul. By it, we are reminded that we have an imperishable part within us which shall survive all earthly existence and which will never, never die. To the loving goodness of our Supreme Grand Master, we may confidently hope that like this evergreen, our souls will hereafter flourish in eternal spring. We shall ever cherish in our hearts the memory of our departed brother. And commending his spirit to Almighty God, we trustingly leave him in the hands of that beneficent being who has done all things well, who is glorious in his holiness, wondrous in his powers, and boundless in his goodness. And it should always be our endeavor so to live that we too may be found worthy to inherit the kingdom prepared for us from the foundation of the world. At this point, if any brother would like to say something or from the guest, the mic is open. Good afternoon. My name is Sir Ferdinand Kiambau. I am the current master of this lads, Cracker Lads 212. I know our uh, brother, Worshipful Pete, for his uh, character of he is so very uh, happy. And uh, when we have the uh, fellowship in there, he's always smiling. And I admired him because of, of his age, despite of his age, he still drink. And he still he has a cigar. He's always a cigar. Sometimes I was standing there going out to the lads, and I may see him 
Oh, worshiper, what are you doing here? Why you don't you go inside? I just want to see the lads before I will sleep. <laughs> That's what uh, he is. He wants to see the lads and he is always in there. That's all I know to him that uh, he was so very, uh, very uh, active in the lads. And uh, his heart is in our lads. That's all. It is always hard to find a word that will describe a good man like my brother, Pete. I only have my good friendship with him for over almost 50 years. When I stepped foot in the, in, from the Philippines to the United States in 1971, he's the first guy I met the following day. And from that day on, we've been together. Our friendship turns out like a good brother. It's hard for me to say anything much more than being, telling everyone how good person is my brother. Good, he's excellent, and I always call him Smiley because you never see him seeing you or talking to you without his painful uh, dimples. <laughs> That's why every time he says, oh, here he comes, Smiley. Hooray, let's toast for him. That means we are ready to drink our cognac. <laughs> that is his favorite, cognac, which is mine too. So That's why we go together. In times of happiness and, lo and loneliness like this, being with him, with him but uh, lying there and I am still alive. Thanks God that I have, I have been fortunate to meet him before he goes. On the f Monday of April 21, I got a call, my wife got a call from the wife Rose that uh, Pete is already gone. I'm still alive and we, we might not have a chance to meet him alive. So immediately, me and my wife went to his house. And there we see him, saw him lying. It feel, I feel so bad seeing my partner toasting a bottle of cognac, toasting a glass of cognac, and now he's lying down there. And I'm still here laughing, smiling. I pity him, but I says, God says, don't pity those people that are departing because they are going to the place where happiness will be an everlasting. On Thursday of the same week, that was the 14th of April, he, I got it, my wife got a call again from him, that, from the wife, that he passed away immediately, I told my wife, dress up and let us go to his place. So before he died, I was there. And at the time that he was, his body was removed from the house, transported to Dugan, I, I witnessed all the scenarios of life, of being with him. And now, what can we say? He is now traveling to a place where there is no end. His travel might be rough and rugged road, but beneath that traveling, you will see a dark tunnel, but at the end of it, you will see a light waiting for you, which will give you an everlasting happiness. Thank you very much. Oh, my name is Manny Banta. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time, Mr. Paul. You did a good job. Take your time. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those of you who doesn't know me, I'm Jun Kaba. I'm Peter's brother. My brother was born in July 17, 1937. He was nurtured and cared for by my parents very carefully. He always has been magnificent and smart in school. You know, I remember during high school, he would just bring a book, a pocket, a notebook, and tuck it in his back pocket. But when the test comes around, he always gets 90s in his grade. I, I, I couldn't understand it. I said, why is it that he gets the high grade and me that I studied all night didn't make it? <laughs> so one day I went to the church and prayed and said and asked God, I said, why is this God? And then while I was going through those books, I come across a book that says, God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Right then and there, I realized that he truly is a much better person in terms of intelligence and things like that than I am. I have admitted that fact. I love my brother. I remember one day we went home to our province and my dad always was very proud of us. He would put us in front of the Galliera. Galliera in the Philippines is a place where you have cockfights. And this is done during town fiestas in Santiago Ilocosur. My dad was very proud of me. Of course, he always beat me up, but you know. He's my brother. And when I went to the Philippines, I went over to see him. I told him that I would bring him his favorite cigar. And he said, yeah, sure, that's fantastic. And that was the very last time I see my brother. And when I come back, my daughter and I were supposed to go and see him on a Thursday. But unfortunately, that Thursday morning, he passed away. But you know, there is a certain lesson to be learned from this, that whenever your loved ones leave for home, hug them, give them a kiss, and tell them how much you care for them, for that might be the last time you'd ever see your loved one. Thank you all very much, and thank you for sharing this wonderful moment for my brother. Thank you. Um, I will just share a short story about Worshipful Pete. I met him in 2006 when I became a member of Crocker Lodge. Um, there, are, there are two best dressed brothers in our lodge. The first one is Worshipful Pete. And the second one is Worshipful Manivanta, right there. <laughs> now I understand why these two guys, kung sa Tagalog pa, sputing na sputing every time they go to the lodge. They're, they're really well dressed. So now I understand Worshipful. So it's the two of you competing, huh? <laughs> so uh, Worshipful Pete was very supportive. Uh, I went through the line, became master. He, at the background, he would always say, you're doing good, bro. Just keep it up, keep it up. I asked him questions. He will tell me interaction with Worshipful Pete, uh, unfortunately, was only limited to Masonic work. I did not have a chance to meet the daughters or uh, other family members until today. And uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, one more f fun fact about Worshipful Pete at Crocker Lodge. He's known as the playboy of Crocker Lodge. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> so, and also, uh, being be, be, him big. Be, being a, a cigar person, he would always go out, uh, he would always stay at the door of the lodge to go.
together with my wife, my wife smokes cigarettes until now. Worshipful Pete will be puffing on his cigar like a mafioso. Like. That, that is how I will remember Worshipful Pete. We extend to the bereaved relatives and friends of our departed brother our sincere sympathy in this hour of sorrow. And we pray that he who tempers the wind from the shorn lamb will grant them his divine comfort and consolation. And that they may come to realize that the spirit of our brother is happy in his father's house, where God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and where there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Soft and safe to thee, my brother, be thy resting place. Bright and glorious be thy rising from it. Fragrant be the acacia's prayer that there shall flourish. May the earliest buds of spring Unfold their duties o'er thy resting place, and there may the sweetness of the summer's last rose linger longest. Though the winds of autumn may destroy the loveliness of their existence, yet the destruction is not final. And in the springtime they shall surely bloom again. So in the bright morning of the resurrection, thy spirit shall spring into newness of life, and expand in immortal beauty in realms beyond the skies. Until then, dear brother, until then, farewell. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face and shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift upon us the light of his countenance and give us peace. Amen. Almighty Father, eternal God, hear our prayers for our brother, Pete, whom you have called from this life to yourself. Grant him light, happiness, and peace, and let him pass in safety through the gates of death. 
and live forever with all your saints. In the light you promised to Abraham and to all his descendants in faith, guard him from all harm, and on the great day of resurrection and reward, raise him up, O Lord, with all your saints, and keep him eternal life in your kingdom. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. The marshal will take charge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 